Hello! In the previous video, we studied about the atomic spectra, the absorption and the emission spectra, and how the identity of an element, just like the thumbprint of a human being, the identity is the characteristic spectra produced by every element. So now going ahead with this thought in mind, the scientists were working and they wanted to come to another model of an atom. Balmer was a scientist who found or he proposed a formula. He said that when you pass electric discharge through hydrogen, which means that if you take hydrogen molecules and you pass high voltage electric current through it, we find that the hydrogen molecules, they dissociate and they turn into hydrogen atoms. And these hydrogen atoms, the energy that they absorb when they release this energy and the spectrum is recorded, we get lines in the spectrum of hydrogen. These lines are characteristic and you, we know that hydrogen has only one electron. Therefore, you would expect the line to be only one perhaps, but we find that there is a series of lines that is obtained in the case of hydrogen. But when Balmer was working, he only found or he only saw the lines in the visible range, which were these. So he called these lines the Balmer series. These lines were called, or rather they were named later after him, that is, they were called the Balmer series. And he said, he gave a formula, he said that if we express these in terms of wave number, then we find a relationship. And the relationship is that wave number is equal to 109677 1 by 2 square minus 1 by n square centimeter inverse where n this was 1 by 2 square and n was anything greater than 2 that is it was 3 or greater than 3. So this is a formula that was given by Balmer which very nicely explained the Balmer series and you could calculate the wave number from the Balmer uh, formula. Later there was another scientist called Johannes Rydberg and Rydberg gave his own uh, formula and he said that there were lines he had found now that there were lines not only in the visible range of the spectrum they were present also in the ultraviolet and the infrared range of the spectrum so after all these scientists who one by one were finding these he gave Rydberg gave his formula and he said he just modified that the uh, Balmer formula and he said that this is 109 wave number is equal to 109677 into 1 upon n1 square minus 1 upon n2 square centimeter inverse he said that all of these lines that, that were obtained could be ex could be explained by the same formula and that was n1 square and n2 square where n1 were were 1 2 had values of 1 2 3 4 and n2 was were a, any values that was n1 plus 1 n1 plus 2 n1 plus 3 so n2 could be a series if n1 was fixed so whatever was the value of n1 n2 could be anything greater than n1 and this would still be applicable now what was if you really think what was happening here the atoms were absorbing energy and when they absorbed energy, they became excited. The electrons, they became excited. And when they were excited, they gave out that energy to acquire the original stability. And whatever energy they had absorbed, they would emit the same energy. And that would be recorded as uh, the spectrum, one of the lines in the spectrum. So whatever energy the electron, and since it was not a single atom of hydrogen, it was um, hydrogen gas in the chamber. Therefore, different lines were being produced by different electrons and different atoms of hydrogen. But each time you would take a hydrogen sample, you would get the same lines. You would get identical patterns for them, which meant that these lines were characteristic for every element. So these series, how could they be explained? Now Bohr imagined that if an atom 
Uh, let us imagine atoms to be like the solar system. The nucleus is in the center because by now we knew the existence of a nucleus. The nucleus is in the center and there are the orbits, energy levels are in concentric circles around it. Electrons cannot be present anywhere around the atom. They can be present only in allowed orbits around the nucleus. And these orbits that are allowed, they have specific energies. So he explained this in the terms that if an atom, uh, an electron gains, let us say these are the concentric, this is the nucleus, and these are the concentric orbits, one, two, three, and four. So if an electron is present here in hydrogen, where there is only one electron, and it would be more stable if the electron is closest to the nucleus. So when it absorbs energy, the electron may jump to a second level. If it jumps to a second level, when it emits that, that much of the energy difference between the two levels, if it absorbs only this much of energy, then it jumps to the second level. But if it absorbs this much energy, it jumps to the third level. If it absorbs the energy which is equal to the difference of three levels, then it jumps to a higher level. And whatever energy it absorbed, it emits the same to give you the spectrum. And that is the time when it releases so much of energy, you get different line, a different line. When it releases lesser energy, you get a different line because the electron moves back to the original level. But at times, in one, the energy, the electron which goes up here, it may not release all of the energy or it may in release the energy in bits. Therefore, when the electron jumps from a third level to a second level, from the third level to a second level, you get another series. All levels higher than the second level or whatever comes back to the second level was seen as the Balmer series. Yeah. So he said that when electrons jump from higher level to lower levels, these are the different lines that we see in the hydrogen spectrum. And that's the reason why we do not get just one line. So what were these series known as? The series were five of them in the case of hydrogen. The first one was known as the Lyman series. The Lyman series was where the electron was in the first shell, it moved up to the second, third, fourth, and when the electrons returned, the energy they gave out formed the Lyman series. The Balmer series was when the electron was initially at the second level, that is, it had already absorbed the energy and it was waiting, and there it absorbed energy and went up to a higher level, and when the electrons returned, they returned to the second level, producing the Balmer series. Since the Balmer series is in the visible range, this is what was visible first. These were identified first by Balmer. The Lyman series fall in the ultra ultraviolet region. So when an electron goes to the second level, comes back to the first, third to first, fourth to first, fifth to first, and sixth to first, you get the Lyman series. The Bama series is when the electrons return to the second level. The third is the Paskin series. The Paskin series are where the level is the third and the electrons are in the fourth, fifth, sixth levels and when they return, they form the third series which is known as the Paskin series. These are in the infrared region. And after that is the bracket series. The bracket series also fall uh, is when the N1 is 4 and N2 is 5, 6. So when they return, we get the bracket series. And finally is the fun series. The P is silent. The fun series is where N1 is 5 and N2 is greater than 5. So Bohr now imagined the atom to be to, the, uh, to have quantization of energy levels and it was on this idea of quantization of energy levels that he gave his model of the hydrogen atom. So from that, the, this was again another step towards the quantum electronic or, or the quantum atomic model. In the next video, we'll study about the uh, Bohr's hydrogen, the model for hydrogen atom. And thank you for watching. Please return for more videos on chemistry. Like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.